The 1001 Nights and Ras al Khaimah. No, it isn't the title of an adventure book, but it is the description of a pearl of the United Arab Emirates. To be precise, the emirate that joined in 1972, positioned to the west and looking out over the Gulf of Persia. It is Ras al Khaimah, a destination that is now considered super luxurious with five-star resorts, delightful white sandy beaches, unbelievable 18-hole golf courses, luxurious gardens, and swimming pools that seem to be lagoons. Luxuries that can also be found everywhere in the exuberant displays of Mother Nature. First of them all is the sea. And it is with the sea that we begin our discovery of this emerging emirate, a land of emirs, sheikhs, and sultans. On the quay of the Al Amra Marina and Yacht Club, waiting for us is a prince, the Prince of Sea, a fascinating yacht ready to weigh anchor and to fill her sails. Welcome, guys. My name is Sam, and I'm Captain Prince of Sea. Uh, Prince of Sea from Turkey. I bring it in Turkey and uh, Ras al Khema, one month and seven days. Me and my crew and on the Zayacht. We have a specific cabin and uh, two salons and uh, have a big front and all people want to stay in the sun. We have a uh, sun deacon upstairs and we have also in the back one more. I start in the GT uh, Marina Al Hamra. I go to an uh, open sea, 20 million in the sea. And uh, you have an activity in the yacht. When you finish all activity, I go to stop in uh, Morgan Island. With the wind behind us, we sail off into the calm waters of the Arabian Gulf. But very soon, in pure Arabian style, our tranquility is interrupted to begin an adventure that we can only describe as really original. join these games and with our cameras we are flying just above the water turning at 360 degrees in the middle of the sea. Great fun that is so very contagious that everyone joins in, from the guests as well as members of the crew. But none of us can compete with the acrobatics of our captain who not only flies, but walks on water. After a series of dives, some better than others, the moment arrives for us to have a swim. If until now we have only caressed the sea, now it is time to relax and let this warm, clear water engulf us. An activity that everyone can take part in, even the less adventurous. After this playful interlude, we continue sailing and wait for our rich buffet lunch that satisfies our appetite. Now that we have satisfied our taste buds, it is the third sense that will have its day now, our eyes and what they see. We're coming closer to the coast and halfway between the sea and the sky, we admire these proud futuristic structures, just as the beach is also futuristic here on Margin Island, our final destination. Born from a project that is still in full expansion that has tried to put together both eco-sustainability and natural beauty, the beach is totally artificial just like the island that it sits on. In order to make this dream of paradise on Earth real, this strip of sand surrounded by a warm turquoise sea is dotted with millions of seashells that have been brought here from other beaches. Like an unreal carpet, made natural as only the Arab Emirates know how. We return on board of our Prince of the Sea, right in time to transfer on the fast motorboat belonging to Antonio, a purebred Italian loaned to the Emirates. Antonio, the most famous Italian guy in Rasul Khaimah. 
<laughs> in Emirates. <laughs> Anybody like, want to uh, fish? Uh, Antonio is the most professional fishing guy in Russell Cave, really. He know everywhere on the sea. If you want to catch kingfish, he will take you to the kingfish. If you want barracuda, he will take you to the barracuda. He know where the fish is living. <laughs> A real expert when it comes to open sea fishing, Antonio is only one of many people who have decided to transfer to the Arab Emirates in order to start a new life and a promising activity. I have lived in the Emirates now for about four years, and only a year ago I decided to open a business here in Ras Al Khaimah. I bought a boat of about 12 meters and I take tourists out to fish for about four hours. The clients are Russians, English and quite a few Italians. As well as barracuda, we fish for small groupers that are also called moor. We also fish for kingfish. There are at least 15 different species of fish here. This is truly a great passion. We have been out sometimes for three to four hours without catching a fish. But the emotion of being out on the boat for three hours is unique. Before coming to Dubai, I lived for six years in Sharm el Sheikh, two years in Morocco. I have also been in the Caribbean. I have traveled around quite a bit until I have found this place, which is a true paradise, a natural paradise, but also a land of opportunity that other Italians have decided to take advantage of, giving life to typical made in Italy business activities. This evening, we will have a demonstration of how to make mozzarella cheese in the United Arab Emirates. This is milk that was coagulated this morning. Now we add boiling water. We have already added the salt. Now we begin the cooking. These are the melting carts. The only types of milk that melt in this way are buffalo milk and cow's milk. The cheese is ready to be cut now and we do it as they did years ago. You must mozza, Italian for forming the balls of mozzarella by hand. That is where the name mozzarella comes from. Now we will make a plate, which is typically from Sorrento, near where I come from. Anodino or not, which is typical of Apulia, a typical mozzarella from Aversa, and some small burrate for our guests. This cheese is opened and inside we put the stracciatella cheese, which is the melted mozzarella that looks like rags, therefore stracciata or raggedy, and as our restaurant is called pesto, we also add a little pesto from Liguria. Now we will make another one with tomatoes, like a plate of mozzarella and tomatoes that is backwards, meaning that the tomato is inside the mozzarella cheese. Creativity is quite surely one of Francesco's best qualities, and this is reconfirmed by the variety of hors d'oeuvre that he has prepared. Hors d'oeuvre that, with the mozzarella, are absolutely fabulous. Et voila, here you are. And naturally, like a good Italian, he could not forget the pizza. Pizza dough made with Italian flour that has been proving for two days, some Marzano tomatoes imported from the Neapolitan region, fresh basil and buffalo mozzarella. We will cut it in a typical Arabic coven. This is the way the Italian spirit adapts for Italian cooks working abroad. Here we are, a piece of Naples in Ras Al Khaimah. Buon appetito! An amazing and above all genuine cuisine is what you find in Ras Al Khaimah, as they want to pamper their guests coming to their country, just like the comfort and luxury the five-star resorts have to offer.
inspiration of the hotel has been taken from the local environment. So the creams for the beaches, the golds for the desert, the red for the mountains, and then the greens and the blues for the sea. Razalkema is really famous for its pearl fishing industry. So the head of the clock is designed to resemble a pearl. Then there is um, an inscription here which says, from your homeland, travel abroad to find glory. It's an ancient Bedouin poem which relates to travel in the region, which is why the four faces of the clock look like a compass. It took 30 men eight months to build and is made from champagne, gold and steel and costs 1.5 million dirhams. But here are conserved some other treasures of great value that have come from the royal family, no less. The peacock was gifted to us by the shaker of Ras al -Khaimah. The base is made from lapis lazuli. There is turquoise, white diamonds, black diamonds, yellow diamonds and sapphires. The feathers are taken from the peacocks that reside at the palace. Most certainly not as precious but unique of its kind is another magical thing that captures our lenses. Welcome to the Valle of Astoria Gingerbread House. It took our team of engineers, chefs, pastry chefs, bakers, five weeks to construct and build this beautiful gingerbread house. It consists of around about 10,000 gingerbread tiles and the whole structure is built out of wood. It took us 100 kilos of flour, uh, 25 kilos of egg yolks, 100 kilos of egg whites, 25 kilos of chocolate, 20 kilos of ginger to build this house. We had uh, an inquiry from a guest who would like to stay in our gingerbread house. Uh, when uh, the guest was seeing um, our setups on uh, Instagram and Facebook, uh, their mate actually uh, um, sent us an email and said that they would like to stay in our gingerbread house for one night. Out of safety reason, we can't obviously entertain this thought, but um, thank you for anyways for asking. Yeah? We have normally 346 rooms in the hotel. With this one, we have 347 rooms in the hotel. We seem drunk with all of this abundance, but it is now time to return to our preferred luxury, all that Mother Nature can show us and that we can discover. Far away from the sea and every comfort, we throw ourselves into a new adventure that takes us to a precise destination, the mountains of Jebel Jais. Situated in the extreme south of Ras al Khaimah, this huge mountain chain separates the Emirate from Oman and shows us the highest peak of all of the Union at 1,925 meters high. As soon as we reach the entrance to the valley, the mountains seem to welcome us in its embrace, with a view around us of 180 degrees. It is a wild and harsh place, but we decide to continue with our backpacks and our cameras on our shoulders. In Russell Kamer, there are a number of different activities you can do. There is plenty of rock climbing around, and um, people don't know it so well. Uh, they don't actually know the mountains are here, they just think of it as a coast town, um, which is not true. These mountains are good for climbing because there's so much variety. You've got loads of easy ones if you're just starting out. You've got harder ones for those more experienced climbers. And the rock here is ideal for it. While you're climbing, you kind of just feel free. It's a different feeling to anything else. You still feel safe because you've got that rope attached to you, but it's a totally different feeling. You always have that adrenaline rush after you've reached the top. 
and it's such a great feeling. And it is for these intense sensations that brought Samantha here. I'm originally from Scotland. I've been in the outdoor industry for three years now. I moved here two months ago. The reason I love this industry is you just you get to be outside the whole time and that's my passion, that is what I love doing. You're just at one with nature, at one with your surroundings and you get to love it more and more every day. You never get bored, you never see the same things twice. Even if it's pouring with rain back in England, which it quite often does, um, it's still, I still love my job, I love what I do. Now we want to try personally a bit of climbing. And so we begin. All we need now is our equipment of ropes, harness and a large dose of courage. Your harness is there just to keep you safe. So if you fall at any point, your harness is going to catch you. Okay, so you're not going to hit the floor and no injuries will occur. And now you're ready to go. The technique may not be the best, but even we, complete beginners, manage to climb to the top of the rock face without great difficulty, but having a great deal of fun. Brava! Ancora 10 meters e arrivata! But our adventure in the mountains is not over yet. After our climbing, we are going trekking in order to discover the many secrets of this place and also traces of the people who once lived here. It's only about 50 years ago people were still living in these houses. Uh, on the top, there's some over here that still got them. They've got palm on the top and it's just filled with mud and that's what their roofs are made of, and that's also their insulation. Not that they need it much out here, um, it gets quite warm. This one here is a bit bigger from the others. This will be where the Sheikh used to live. So he would have his whole family here, his several wives, all his children, they all would have slept in this little house. A lot different from now, we're just along the, along the valley. We've got their massive big houses with loads of different rooms now. And compared to this, they're living in luxury now. We continue along our road, which now takes us up a steep slope along a pathway of hard rocks and slippery gravel stones. We are beginning to feel tired, but we are immediately rewarded by our conquest. We reach the top with such a beautiful view. This breathtaking view over the valley completes our luxury trip to Ras Al Khaimah and fills us with good vibrations and positive energy. We're here at the top of the mountain in one of the many wadis in Ras Al Khaimah. Uh, wadi here means valley, so it's an area between southern mountains. The old Emiratis, back 50 years ago, used to keep the goats up at the top of the mountains and they lived down the bottom. So every day they would have had to have walked all the way from the bottom back up to the top. So they would have had to have been pretty fit to get from the bottom up to the top every day. But there are those that still live here on these mountains managing to survive the dry heat and the shortage of food. This is Wadi Gina, I live here. This is the place where most of the inhabitants used to live in Ras Al Khaimah. This was the ideal place to channel rainwater that flowed down from the mountains, to cultivate wheat, to produce wild honey and goat's milk. Now it doesn't rain so much. The harvests are much poorer now, and also animals suffer here. 
We are lucky that the government helps us. The royal family intervened personally. I continue to live here all the same. I collect rainwater and I have a stall where I keep my sheep and goats. When we need other kinds of food, we go to the city. We are still able to live quite well here. This is a typical room as they used to build once upon a time. The roof was made of rock and cedar wood that can last up to 100 years. The ceiling is only 1 meter 80 in height. So when entering the house, you had to lower your head. It was built this way for climactic reasons. In the winter, the wind is very strong, and at night, the temperature drops rapidly. The ceiling is higher, it is more difficult to keep the room warm. Here I still keep several things that my father used. There are containers to conserve things after the harvest, wheat, bread. This is a cooking pan. This is a tablecloth. It is more than 40 years old. This is a hand cloth. This lantern, on the other hand, is almost 60 years old. In this chest, we have some kitchen utensils, very old. A mortar to grind cereals into flour. This is used for baking the bread on the fire. This is before 1955. This is the oven. Here we cook our bread and also gain meat. You put the embers in the bottom and then the food on top. We say goodbye to this wild and austere place to continue our discovery of Ras al Khaimah's nature. From the mountains, we move to fresh water and enter kilometers of mangroves. We are a few minutes away from the city center, and waiting for us is a kayak. The kayak is the ideal transport to slide through the quiet waters of this lagoon and to enjoy all of this awesome vegetation. It's an ideal location, being right in the centre of the city. Having the mangroves here is a great boost for the ecosystem. Um, without the mangroves, there are a number of different species of uh, fish, birds, all sorts of wildlife that we wouldn't have without these mangroves. Challenging Adventure have been running uh, a clean-up, so we're trying to pick up some litter. Uh, to try and get this place nice and clean so we can have as much wildlife as we can here. All around us we only hear the sound of the wind that moves in the mangroves, the sound of an oar as it touches the water, and the last bird song just before sunset. Our very intense day has come to its end. Here, where modern luxury is accompanied by nature that is thousands of years old, our final curtain comes down on our film cameras. Leaving everything in solitude, from the mountains sculpted by time to the waves of the sea tinted in silver. <laughs>